In this video, I would like to go over a comparison between the Sony RX0 Mark II and the GoPro Hero 10. So both of these cameras are aimed towards action photographers and videographers as well as bloggers. The Sony RX0 Mark II is aimed more towards professional shooters. This camera could be like a B or a C cam for a more professional camera. But I found this camera to be really capable. I've been using it a lot on my travel videos and photographies. So just a disclaimer, I'm not a professional photographer or a professional videographer. I'm just a travel videographer. So let's go over these cameras in detail. So the Sony RX0 Mark II, if you compare it side by side with the GoPro, you can see that it's actually smaller than the GoPro Hero 10. The GoPro Hero 10 is uh, bigger camera in general and if we take a look at it from the top view you can see that the sony is a little thicker camera on the back you can see that the sony has this small lcd screen and then the back of the gopro you can see it also has a screen but it's much larger one thing that i find useful on the gopro is the front screen so you can see it has a built-in screen whereas the Sony, in order to use the screen in the front side, you need to tilt it. So you can see, you can tilt it all the way you like it. And there you go. This is for like a blogging kind of a shooting scenario. Both of these get the job done. The front screen on the GoPro as well as this one. But you can see this articulation goes further and you can actually shoot it in different scenarios. So in general, you can think of Sony RX0 to have a more versatile tilting screen but again the size of the screen is really small that might be a disadvantage because uh, it's really small to view uh, details so let me go ahead and close that in so you can see the mechanism of tilting is very sturdy and very robust you will also notice that the sony has two buttons on the top so one is for toggling the power on and off the other one is for recording whereas the gopro has a record button in here and then it also has a power button and a mode button on the side view. So if we take a look at the battery on this, the Sony RX0, it has a removable battery like a GoPro. So you can actually remove it like so. It has a very small little battery that you can see. There you go. This is what the battery looks like. So this battery module, you can see it's called the NPBJ1 and it's only 700 milliamperes and in my shooting scenarios when I shoot 4k videos I usually get about uh, 30 to 40 minutes of battery time on this not enough so you need to have spare batteries take a look at the GoPro it uh, has a different compartment for the battery storage so you just go ahead open this slider and there you have it so you have this uh, tab that you can use to pull the battery so in comparison to the sony battery you can see the gopro battery is significantly larger is about 1720 milliamperes so it's more than double almost three times the capacity that we have on the sony battery and it gives us a lot more battery time when shooting 4k videos or even 5k videos on this gopro camera so if i compare both of these batteries side by side you can see the sony it's uh, tiny compared to the GoPro in all dimension. So it's always a good idea to carry spare batteries for the Sony because it's going to last a lot less than the GoPro. You can see both of these cameras, they have this uh, weather shielding, water resistant body. So you can see it has this uh, rubber outer gasket. So it gives you total water protection. It's a total waterproofing up to about uh, 10 meters. Same thing for the GoPro as well. And you can see, this is what it looks like. You put in the memory card like so on the GoPro. And it also has this water sealing, weather sealing, which gives it waterproofing. And I've taken both of these cameras on the water to shoot footage, and they do a great, excellent job on that. One thing I've noticed if you're shooting with a Sony underwater, the sound gets muffled a little. Okay, so it's not ideal to use uh, the Sony with the sound underwater. But the GoPro does a good job on that. Now for the Sony, if we take a look at this compartment over here, 
so you can see if I just quickly release that you can see it has a mic input a micro USB and also a very small SDMI the benefit over here over the GoPro is that the GoPro doesn't have any kind of a mic input it only has one connection and that is the USB Type-C for charging and uh, putting uploading and offloading the files that's pretty much it the Sony on the other hand it gives you more versatility because it gives you a mic input so I can use small microphones like this so here I have a Saramonic microphone which is perfect for this Sony so you can just put it right through that mic input jack and if you take a look at it this is what it looks like that's that's a handy little addition that we have and the other thing is you can also remove this flap if you don't need it so just it just comes out like that same thing for the GoPro as well you can also take out these flaps if you want it but it doesn't have a mic input however the GoPro it's compatible with its own ecosystem so it has this uh, blogging accessories and mics and kit that you can fit but I found the mic on the GoPro to be really nice it's really good quality so I do not see any need for additional mic setup you may notice that I put in these uh, wind jammers on the mic this is because uh, when I'm shooting outdoor up in the mountain when doing those motorcycle adventures we need wind protection that's why I'm using this uh, Raikote micro wind jammer just sticks in like this it's very useful and I do recommend it. if you are a travel photographer or a videographer or if you want wind protection go for this this is what it looks like and this comes in this little kit that you can find it has the sticky mount and then the wind jammer itself so on the Sony camera you can see it also accepts micro SD card and it goes right over there underneath this flap let's talk a little bit about the specs of these cameras now both of these cameras are geared towards a similar target group but functionally they are quite different in my opinion the Sony has a one inch sensor so that's a big sensor compared to the tiny sensor that we have on the GoPro so the sensor on the GoPro is uh, much smaller compared to the Sony there is no figure on how big the sensor size is but uh, my assumption is that it's about the size of a typical smartphone camera the Sony because it has a bigger image sensor it has a better higher dynamic range output overall general contrast the details on it also better at uh, low light performance and low noise capabilities that being said GoPro is also no slouch it is also much better in the low light capabilities than its predecessor the GoPro Hero 9 they have worked on on some uh, algorithm processing of the image so it's much better now Sony has uh, the Zeiss lens built in it it is a 24 millimeters equivalent field of view with the full frame equivalent that is and then it is f4 in aperture it is not a variable aperture it's wide open at f4 and that is fixed the GoPro on the other hand it has a much greater field of view it's more wide angle it has a fisheye lens if you want much wider field of view which is better for action videography and photography GoPro is a winner but if you want more traditional film like wide angle the 24 mm equivalent that is Sony is the way to go because the Sony has a larger sensor and uh, such a tiny body they have you know it's compared to the GoPro it's even smaller the lens that it has is just f4 aperture I wish that it has a much bigger aperture for better low light shooting and better out of focus rendition speaking of the out of focus you know the size of the sensor it really makes a big difference because the GoPro since it has a bigger field of view and also using a small sensor the out of focus rendition or the depth of field you're getting a much deeper depth of field on the GoPro so you don't need to worry about uh, out of focusing because its auto focus is fixed and that's a good thing because it's going to capture all the detail up to about uh, within a range of one meter to infinity the Sony doesn't do that because it has a bigger sensor you're getting that uh, much shallower depth of field and that's why Sony has built in the autofocus in it but that's not doing a great job 
because it's just a single out of focus and you sometimes when you're shooting you know you shoot close focus and then when you're taking a look at the infinity it's all out of focus and that's something that you cannot fix because there is no continuous out of focus and a workaround for that is i use a mode called near and and a far mode so i set these on a program button in here you can if you can see that on a tiny screen i'm not sure but i program it on this button this is going to enable the near mode and also disable it cancels the near mode and when you want to close up capture you can set it to near mode and then it's about uh, you know focused right way up to one meter that's good and that's a workaround that we have for the sony camera and one downside with the sony is that it's not using the full width and height of the image circle of the one inch sensor using this lens so that's going to be a little disadvantage because it's going to be like zooming in pixels of this sensor i would love to see if sony can get the job done by using the full image circle when shooting videos or photos the gopro on the other hand it has this option to shoot in full image circle so that is the 4 is to 3 native aspect ratio which uses the full image circle and it's especially useful if you want to use high resolution captures when your camera is static in the position or if you want to do some post processing on the video for stabilization using a gopro application called real steady which i use a lot for stabilizing the footage so that's a win for the gopro if only sony could get that fixed you know using the full image circle uh, that would be much better the sony it suits 4k up to 30 frames per second and 1080 you can suit up to 120 fps so good for slow motion as well the gopro on the other hand is better spec it can shoot 5k videos up to about 60 frames per second it can shoot 4k 120 and 1080 at 240 fps much better slow motion capabilities on the gopro and much better image resolution as well for the sony is that it has this detachable front cover so you can actually remove it and fit something like uh, the sony's genuine accessories for uh, fitting filters on it but here i have this uh, pulus accessory for sony so it goes like like that you just screw in in here by removing the old one and that's it and the advantage of this is that you can now use filters so if you have some nd filters or polarizing filters lying around you can use that so here you can see this is a 37 millimeter filter filter thread that goes in like this and if you want a greater field of view recording on the sony you can also fit something like a wide angle adapter so in this case i have a very large a wide angle adapter that was lying around uh, by sony itself so it's a 37 millimeter thread as well so if you can take a look at it it was something that was created for the camcorder A's, and this is like a 0.7x wide angle conversion it's not a fisheye so you can actually use this fit it directly onto the pulus adapter and then this goes in to the sony like so so this will increase the field of view if you're looking for that as well but like i said this wide angle adapter is not really a good solution because it's really big is not doing a good purpose of the general size and capability of this sony camera there are some smaller options for the wide angle adapter out there which you can fit much smaller maybe something that is built for a smartphone or a small camera uh, those wide angle adapter it will do a much better job than this one because you can see it's humongous anyways there is an option for that so with this filter you can put in nd filters polarizing filters uv filters anamorphic filters and wide angle adapters that's a plus on the other hand the gopro it has the detachable lens mount so that way you can also fit in nd filters and polarizing filters but since most of the footage out of the gopro will be stabilized using the hyper smooth or the post stabilization using real steady i do not recommend putting the nd filters because it's going to create a really blurry videos uh, due to low frame rate on the video capture maybe sometime when i need to shoot over water i will use the polarizing filter but because it has a very big field of view 
I wouldn't suggest using a CPL filter on it because the sky, the color distortion is uh, not very convincing to the eye. Now let's go ahead and turn on these cameras. So you can see, to turn on and take a video on the Sony, you first of all need to power on. It takes a little while and then it gives you this message because I have turned off the heating setting. So it gives a warning that auto power off temperature is set to high. That being said, it is also need to be noted that this Sony RX0 Mark II, due to the form factor or the processing power, it's very hot. It gets quite hot when shooting. So it's a good idea for shooting just a short snippet of videos. Because once it gets hot, it will turn off the screen, see anything, you cannot change the settings and those things. So that's a downside for the Sony. And to shoot a video, once the power has been turned on, you click on this and you can see how tiny the menu is. It's really difficult to see each and every option in here. And to shoot a video, you just need to record the button. This record button is programmable. You can use it for shooting video, photo, time lapse. So right now, if I click on it, you can see it beeps a sound and that's recording. So that's a two-step process for the Sony, right? So you turn on power, then you click on this. On the other hand, the GoPro, it's a much faster camera. It's aimed toward action photography and videography. You click on this button, that's it. There you go. It starts shooting. And you turn it off by just clicking on that button. That is a very nice little feature. And I would love to see that feature being implemented on the Sony RX as well, because it makes it so much easier to suit the videos. Now, if we take a look at the menu system on the Sony, you can see it's very, very small because of the small screen that you have. If I click on the menu, it has the same menu layout as uh, most of the Sony mirrorless lineup. And this is an outdated menu system that we have. So it's a quite hassle going through each and every piece. But the Sony system, it has a lot of function. There are so many things that you can play. You can do manual focusing on this. You can change the picture profiles like any other Sony mirrorless cameras. You have all set up picture profile, including S-Log as well. But all of that image is captured in 8-bit recording. So it would be really nice if they include 10-bit recording for color grading with S-Log. On the other hand, the GoPro, if you take a look at it, if I turn it on, its menu system is more user-friendly because it's, first of all, it's much larger. You have this shortcut button which you can click here programmable presets. Here I have the standard, activity, epic mode, all this stuff that you can program. You know, if you want ultra slow motion, I can shoot that in 2.7K at 100 frames per second. 5K shooting, I can do that. You have super view capabilities, including the hyper smooth on this. I mostly disable the hyper smooth functionality because the hyper smooth, it will crop in to the field of view. So you are not shooting a lot of the image circle. And on top of that, if you go ahead and toggle to this setting, you can see on the hyper smooth, I have turned on the boost setting. So with the boost, it's a much better image stabilization, but it's going to crop a lot. It's a tight crop. If you're going to disable it to standard, it's going to crop it a little less. So on the hyper smooth, you can see it also gives you the ability to stabilize the horizon. And if you take a look at the lens profile, I have changed it to linear plus horizon labeling. That's something that you can do with the GoPro. So it does all the stabilization and the processing in the camera itself, including the horizon labeling. So you can toggle it on and off. If you want a wider field of view, you can go to super view. If you want a horizon labeling, you can see that it narrows in and gives you this feature. But the downside of this is that it's going to crop into the image circle and that is going to drastically reduce the image quality that you're getting. You can also play with the Protune features which you can control the bitrate, the ISOs, the color profile that you have. Normally I suit with the flat color profile so I can grade it a little later on and I tend to dislike the sharpness on the GoPro. It's really artificial. So I go ahead and lower that out as well. Now, speaking of Sony, it's a different story altogether because the image stabilization that is built into it, which Sony likes to call steady shot, is not on the level of what the GoPro is offering. In other words, it's a very primitive system. So I do not use that steady shot feature that we have on the Sony because it's also cropping in almost 10% to an already cropped image that we're getting on the video. That is why I use Catalyst 
It's a Sony proprietary software that is similar to Real Steady that the GoPro is offering to post-process the stabilization of the video. The good thing is that the GoPro, it suits at 4 is to 3 ratio, a full image circle at about 5.3K resolution. And that gives us a lot of room for getting that beautiful crisp 4K output. The Sony on the other hand, just a 4K image circle, right? And it's also cropping in a lot. When you use the Catalyst Browse, that's going to crop in even further and that's going to drastically reduce the image quality. Other thing that is something that to be noted is that the Sony, it has uh, this tripod thread. The GoPro, they use their proprietary GoPro mount, which looks something like this. This is good if you're using like a tripod. So in this case, I'm using this really small tripod for the Sony, which you can fit it right there. The GoPro on the other hand, because it's using a GoPro mount, you need something like that. So it's really good for like a selfie stick and those kind of things. You can also interchange between them using adapters if you want a GoPro mount on that or if you want a tripod mount on that. What is the use case scenario for these cameras? Why do I have both of these cameras? Well, both of these cameras, they have their own purpose. For shooting outdoor activities, travel videos where it involves riding a motorcycle, hiking, walking, running, those kind of things, I go for GoPro because GoPro gives you such better stabilization and thanks to that field of view you're getting you're capturing a lot of that vista and you don't feel really cramped in and that's what the action camera is supposed to do and it wins in that category on the other hand the Sony it's good for steady shots like if you're on the tripod you're doing just a handhold shot like tilting and panning around you're not walking you're not taking it on a motorbike, you're putting it on a helmet or running around up and down the mountain. It's not going to do that job because the field of view is very narrow compared to the GoPro and the image stabilization that you're getting is also not on par with GoPro. But the pro of using Sony is the image quality. Thanks to the one-inch sensor, you're getting a much better image quality out of it. Better high dynamic range. With the S-Lock profile and the other picture profiles that you have built in, you have the ability to better color grade. The GoPro is a run and gun action camera of choice. I take it up the mountain uh, when hiking, trekking, motorcycle adventures. This is the one that I use. Now that being said, the use case scenario for the Sony travel videos where you do not want to carry big equipments like the bigger mirrorless camera. The field of view that we have on this, it is 24 millimeters, so there is no distortion, not a lot of distortion that is, and the image coming out of it is more pleasing to the eye because it's more film-like, more to us studio captures. You can shoot travel videos with it well, you can take it on your pocket. It's such a tiny camera, I can take both of these cameras on my trip, and the Sony it's going to suit incredible footage, especially useful if you suit time lapses as well with this because you can program it to suit raw photos which you can later post process on the computer to get some incredible footage of time lapse. So there you have it. Both of these cameras, they have their own purposes. And what are my opinions? What I think should be implemented on both of these cameras to make them better, maybe in the future with future iteration. The Sony, it's already it's got a good sensor in it, one inch sensor. But I want Sony to use the full image circle so that we can get a much better output. On top of that, I also want uh, Sony to be able to capture greater resolution, let's say like a 5K resolution. So when I'm post stabilizing the footage, the image doesn't degrade. So that's something that I would like to see the Sony implement on this little tiny professional camera, let's say. On top of that, I would also be happy if Sony comes up with some wide angle filters for this camera. Small ones that is, that's perfectly fitted for the Sony. Just like Handycam days when Sony came up with these wide angle adapters, humongous wide angle adapters, I would like to see the same thing for this tiny camera. That would be really nice. Maybe change the field of view, you know, like uh, get a wide angle adapter for wider field of view and also some tele perspective, tele adapters for let's say twice x, 3x zoom. I would like to see Sony implement the continuous autofocus on this tiny body. That would be a win. That's pretty much it. The GoPro, it's a tried and tested action camera. It's really robust 
really good camera. Older generation of GoPro, they had a problem of uh, freezing and bugging where you need to take out the battery to suit again. That's something that has been fixed with firmware upgrades. And the new GoPro sensor and the processing unit that the GoPro has built into this camera, the GP2 processor that is, is doing a fantastic job. It's not overheating a lot. There is no stuttering. The, it's silky smooth. The, the battery capacity is really nice. What I would like to see an improvement on the GoPro is, look at this, one inch sensor, it is smaller than GoPro. Whereas the GoPro, it has a smaller sensor and it's getting bigger. Why is that happening? Come on GoPro, you can do that. Don't make it too big, don't make it too heavy. You should reduce the form factor size. It is an action camera. You mount it on your helmet, you put it on your chest, you take it on the selfie stick. You don't want to hurt yourself with a big old action camera, right? The other thing that can be improved upon is uh, maybe use a bigger sensor for better low light capability and dynamic range. Increase in the sensor size for the GoPro. It doesn't have to be one in sensor. It can be about 80% of that sensor size for better low light capability and a better high dynamic range. That's all we need. That's pretty much it with these two cameras as a comparison. Both of these cameras, they look similar size-wise, form factor-wise, but serve a totally different purpose. And that's what they sign at equally. So now I would like to go over how I do the post stabilization with the Sony and the GoPro. So using their own proprietary softwares. So the Sony, they have uh, the Catalyst Browse software, which is a free download and it gives you the ability to post stabilize the footage like for example I'm going to play on this video real quickly and just double click on it and you can see the video is very jerky and uh, if you're going to use that on your video it's not going to be looking really nice so to stabilize this footage all you need to do is just click on this little button here and then it will open up the catalyst browse and this is the stabilized view and this is the non-stabilized so if you take a look at it by playing, you can see by going to the manual mode, you can see it goes ahead and crops into that stabilization. So as you can see, it is cropping into almost 70%. And that's a lot of crop. If I go all the way to 100%, this is basically the same thing, right? Without any crops. If I go ahead and reduce this crop factor, you can see that it's now stabilizing the footage. And this is how Sony does the stabilization for you. You want more stabilization, this is what the recommended stabilization the Sony has calculated for you, which is a lot. And you can see it reduces the image quality a lot. And this is why I keep saying that in the firmware upgrades or in the future updates for the Sony, if they come up with a 5K capture or the ability to change uh, the field of view using different lens adapter, that would be really nice. Because you can see it's already cropping in a lot. But the Catalyst Browse, it's doing a fantastic job of stabilization. You can see it's doing a really nice job. One downside is that you cannot label the horizon with this stabilization. I know Sony can do that with a single button in here, but uh, maybe in the future. Now, if I need to export this, you can go ahead and click on this button and you can store it in a directory that you want in the profiles that you want. You can change the color output space as you like it you can change the source output to be full SD or 4K but uh, bear in mind that 4K is going to be a cropped output of the already 4K image that you have so loss in image quality and then that's pretty much it just click on export but when you do the exporting you can see I do not have the ability to batch export I cannot export multiple image clips at the same time so that means I'm losing a lot of time and effort to stabilize the footage right so if only Sony could include the batch rendering for stabilization that would be really nice so once you export this footage it's going to be stabilized and good to go for your videos and that's really nice so that's the Sony Catalyst Browse now let's take a look at the GoPro so the GoPro it has this proprietary software called GoPro player and something that they have done recently is that included the real steady application built into the GoPro and I really love it so let me go ahead and open up the GoPro footage let's say one of these footage so you can see this is what it looks like so without any kind of stabilization you can already see that the fisheye 
distortion on it and it says it, it goes out and it's very intuitive it asks for do you want to apply stabilization yes why not and you can see that on the fly it's so silky smooth much much better and you can toggle uh, the real steady on and off and see the result by clicking on this button you can also change the control of smoothness so the more smoothness that you have it crops in but for some reason the GoPro doesn't crop in a lot as the catalyst does some greater efficiency on the algorithm I would say and there is the option to horizon label it as well so you can label the horizon that's how easy it is and there are advanced setting where you can change the way the lens correction is doing you can put in more linear view more fisheye view and if you want to let's say use the real steady let's go ahead and do a batch exporter you can do that you can go to the batch exporter and you can quickly add the footage and you can see this is how the video has been added you can export it in multiple codecs so you have the GoPro Cineform codec which is a better codec if you are color creating you do not want to lose a lot of uh, details it doesn't have a lot of compression there is also H.265 and H.264 so if we take a look at it uh, you can quickly control that uh, the quality you can change it to high film scan much better options that you have and toggle the real steady on the fly if you want horizon labeling go ahead and do that if you don't need that you can disable it control you know just go ahead and change the setting on all of this you can include hardware encoding if you have a better spec machine for faster output go ahead and turn on the real steady if you don't want the horizon labeling toggle that off so you can see so much easier now I can go ahead and process it by clicking on start button and it will do the job for you. A little tip on stabilization and the fact that I like to post stabilize is that you can control the stabilization. Uh, do you want the horizon to be leveled? Do you want it not to be leveled? The horizon, you know, sometimes I need the horizon to be leveled for that immersive factor. For example, in this case, the bike is tilting and you're getting that nice immersive factor of uh, the camera itself is tilting and that's really nice but uh, if you're going to disable it let's say uh, go to the horizon labeling and activate that real quickly so now all of a sudden you can see on those twisty mountain road if I go ahead and play that again the horizon is leveled right and you do not see a lot of immersion on the video you can disable it disable the horizon labeling it will tilt with the camera enable it it is going to enable the horizon labeling with the camera that's how simple it is now if this could be included on the sony catalyst browse i would be so much happy and i think many users will be as well anyways that's pretty much it with a comparison going over the sony rx0 mark ii and the gopro hero 10 and that's pretty much it so i hope this video was helpful Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.